What's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, but mostly on YouTube. Give us a like, a thumbs up, share us. Hey, yo, Odi! Tell everybody you know about us with your host, Comp and Bobby. And today's film is uh, Darkness, the Vampire Version, uh, 1993. Darkness, the Vampire Version. 1993. Oh boy, they wrote a big What other versions for this were there? I will get into it, I guess. A small community is besieged by vampires after he watches his ravaged in a convenience store. A lone Avenger goes off to do battle with the undead, armed with a shotgun, chainsaw, and holy water. Later, he finds other survivors and they try to stay alive long enough to do battle with Livin, King of the Vampires. Is Di that. Wait, what's the name? King of the Vampires. And Where's it? Said? Livin. It's either Liven or Livin. It's L I V E N. Okay. Written and directed by Leif Yonka. Starring Gary Miller, Michael Gisick, and Randall Avix, and a whole bunch of other people. So, why did I pick Darkness? But first of all, I, I, I'm glad to say I got my, um, my vaccination, the first vaccination Have shot. Have you today. died yet? And. No, but. I don't feel any different! <laughs> That's and, um, good. It was nice. I showed up to the 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 baseball stadium. Uh, a eight foot reptile gave me. Where did they shot, do it at? Like then, Shea Stadium or something? Like yeah, one of those stadiums. And it, they don't put a microchip in the actual like because you know people are paranoid about it. There's no microchip inside the actual shot. They George Soros himself comes over and shoves it right up your ass. Oh, that's good. That's good. And then that's <laughs> he good. says, "Destroy." We need to further. We need to further the. <laughs> The socialist agenda takeover. <laughs> and Bernie was there sitting in his chair going, Do it! Come on, do it! Anyway. He had his mittens on. Yes! Up. Anyway, so Darkness 1990... Uh, the Vampire Version, I have to keep saying that. Uh, so Darkness, the Vampire Version 1993. Uh, how I came about this, I don't know. I, like, That's one of the nice things about Facebook. Because Facebook, for the most part, you don't need it's it. It's terrible. You don't really care, but I don't know how people... I don't know how people lose their information on Facebook. Like Most of it is just a bunch like of explicit boomers passing around chain letters and shit. Like it's terrible. They they just put they put a bunch of their information and they're like, oh, Facebook's taking my life. I'm like, don't put anything in there. You know, just look at memes or whatever. But anyway, I, I'm part of a lot of sort of B movie cult movie face groups and stuff or fa um, yeah. groups and stuff like that. And I randomly saw uh, somebody saying, oh, I don't know which... It might have been the Joe Bob uh, Briggs room or one of those sort of B-movie horror or whatever. And they had a... Either it was a poster for The Darkness or the trailer mm -hmm. for Darkness. And uh, I was like, what's this about? Because they said, oh, this is a good movie. And I was like, let me see. Because I have a fascination with sort of out outsider art. Uh, like, in extremely indie film. This is it's, definitely underground. <laughs> yeah, it's like when we saw... Um, what is that? Something a blood. What was that moon movie that we saw? <laughs> the German film. Oh, oh God, that but that great... was not good though. <laughs> I know, I know, but it was still. I wanted to see it because it was. That was like a half moon rising or something. Like <laughs> I, people are gonna get mad because it was, it was a German horror film called the the something. It wasn't moon, whatever. good though. So whatever. It was. Fun. I, I I enjoyed it, but it was very bad. But the darkness is one of those indie films that nobody knows about, and these companies that. Um, take them up like um, they reissue these films like years after because they understand that there's like a cheese element to it but they also yep. appreciate that you know a lot of love and care went into the movies themselves and I'll tell you this I wasn't I didn't know what I was expecting like I knew this was probably just gonna be some sort of cheap movie like I saw a trailer for another or I actually saw a movie called Scary Tales it's one of the worst <laughs> movies that we got Scary gotta Tales do. like the book no, that's uh... definitely not on the book, but it, it was just called Scary Tales. Uh, oh man, I can't wait for you and Thea and I to do that one because it's so uh... bad. It's 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 um what was Why that, that the African American me? horror movie one that we saw the um whatever that horror movie that we saw that was so cheap. It's on that level of like whoa, this is cheap uh... shit. But anyway, okay. So a lot of these companies come out and they reissue these films years later because then you know they realize that these are cult films. They realize that you know you can get a laugh out of it. But you can also appreciate that, you know, a director or whoever from the fucking 90s did this, you know? 
So I don't I know mean, how this many... budget. The budget is five thousand dollars. I don't even believe Which I guess, it was five thousand dollars. I mean, I guess at that time, five thousand was probably more. Like, I, I, what was the price? Like thirty thousand in the nineties. But like, still, that's insanely cheap. So I actually have like way more respect after seeing that because that's crazy. So I think what happens is the the, the director of this Leaf Yonker actually looked for him online. He hasn't directed another full feature after this. Uh, I think okay. what happened is they shot this originally in 1987, and then they took a couple of years off and finished it in 1993 with a different right. cast. And I was like, I didn't even recognize it, it was different. Well, that the, would explain why I can't identify <laughs> it. Uh, named, uh, this is from the trivia, named the goriest vampire film by, of all time by Horror Hound Magazine in 2015. I, I don't agree with that. Uh, here it goes. Production began in 1988, stalled and was later finished in 1989. Post-production began soon after the project wrapped, but wasn't completed until 1991. So, to obtain money... What would the goriest vampire movie be? I'm like... Dust Till Dawn, easily, uh, is much gorier than this. Oh, that's true. Uh, to obtain money for the film, the production crew sold their blood. Leif Jonker wrote the screenplay when he was 17 years old. And oh, I love that. They sold their blood that's great, to yeah. fund a vampire and movie. Here's the thing, because like this, you don't go into the movie knowing it's going to be fucking a masterpiece. But what I do is I tend to look up the filmmaker that made it because it reminded me of trying to make films in junior high school. Do you know what I mean? With my friends and stuff. And I, I yeah. found an interview with Leif Jonker and he's like this big jovial, like big guy with a big I mean, beard. this was when he was 17, right. it said, he started making And movies. he just, and the, guy, the guy's voice, he sounds like he has 10 pound balls. He sounds like a fucking, like, you know how Grindhouse trailers... They sound like this. Right. Like he sounds like that. It's like what the fuck? He should have been a voice actor or something. But he's talking about right. you know how he wanted to make films after he saw Alien and stuff like that as a kid and stuff like that. And I was like, that's that's you know that's cool. Like you can see that the guy gave a shit. And he he runs a lot of film festivals. Like he'll oh, cool. try to you know he'll get evil. He'll play Evil Dead Two over and over and like other sort of really well known horror films and stuff like that. Like in his area where I forget where they where they filmed this, but that's essentially where he was stationed, and he still does that to this day. So I think that shows cool. like he's he's like a real deal like film guy, and he took some of those elements to make this film. Like this film isn't the most professionally made film, and the version that we saw was I mean, obviously the guy made not... it when he was like a teenager. Yeah. So I, I made I made a movie right. when I was a teenager, <laughs> a Star Wars parody with my friends, and it is. So much worse than anything you can imagine. <laughs> well, mine too, yeah, because it's like when uh, this is better than stuff than I did when I was 20 <laughs> years old. So, right. I mean, like, he, like, I'm watching it and I was like, because I'm thinking about this, right? I'm like, I'm watching the film and it's very simple, sort of what it is, is A to Z. Uh, a guy um, runs into a gas station. Let me tell you this, first of all. It's the worst acting. <laughs> the, it has to have the, the largest <laughs> yeah, cast. Yeah, there's some pretty the, bad acting. It's got to be the largest cast of the worst actors you've ever seen. And in the, the movie. main like, guy's every... voice does not fit his body at all. <laughs> so it's like the largest cast. I think these were just all his friends. He didn't go out and get actors. I hope he just didn't go out and get actors because he needs. they need to pay him for that. But um, you know what? It, it, it adds to the charm of the movie, I think. Yeah. Like if you know going in... It's the biggest, the, the only good actor in this I film I mean, they'll be band. like uh, somebody watching their friend getting ripped to shreds and they just stand there going, oh no, like, <laughs> what do I the, do? Like, And they the just only, stand there and wait to get killed. The only good actor in this film is the vampire because he doesn't talk. That's the only right. reason he why that guy's the best actor. He does look angry too, the vampire. He looks, you know, he looks like Jericho or some wrestler. Like, he just looks like a wrestler guy. Uh, but he, yeah. looked, he had he you know what he looks the role that guy it was, it was a very uh, was. hair metal y feeling to yes this right movie. and it was funny because watching this I was like to me this looked like like if they had given cameras to school shooters instead of guns they probably would have made this movie <laughs> and not cause I'm I'm serious didn't it look like like a fantasy <laughs> it was like a fantasy of like a school shooter just making this movie instead of actually going and killing people and being complete right. pussies. Um, hey, whatever it takes to not kill people. <laughs> exactly, just to stop it. But uh, I, I had fun with this. How do, how does this movie start off, Danny? Uh, well, it starts <laughs> off with a, a really bad cop actress. In a, in she a was gas bad. Station. It was bad. She was uh, the guy running in. 
with a gun saying uh, he's being chased and there's a cop there and then he kills himself for no reason. He keeps and saying, so he's just, coming, he's coming, it's gonna, we're going to run out of time. I mean, these vampires like, are pretty easy to kill. Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they just, and so they and that, they walk very slow like they they kind of act like zombies like so it's really they're not that threatening. This the movie looks about the same budget as and and hold on before I finish the sentence. It looks about the same budget of Evil Dead One, but they just didn't do any sort of art aesthetics to it. You know what I mean, right? Bill, I like, I mean I don't know. Maybe the YouTube I watched it on like it was a bad yeah they re they remastered rendering. it. There's yeah, because I would be that, curious to see what it looks like when it's not pixelated worse than anything ever made. Yeah, it was it's pretty, so like, the pixelated. pixelation was very bad, so I'm, I'm trying and, to and figure out... And the lighting, out. like, everything is so dark, but I know that's, like, a lot of just the rendering, not the filming. Yeah, you know? yeah. And um, I, I think um, just the, the feeling of the film, it's a very easy to follow film. Oh, not for you, I guess, because all the characters look the same to you. Yeah, <laughs> no, I just is having trouble... I. I once I gave up trying to identify who's who and just watched it as, okay, the good guys are running from vampires, then it was fine. Oh, it's weird. In the, in the Next <laughs> Why time. not? You know? Why not? Uh, anyway, so um, there, there's an aesthetic to this film in that it's like, it's competent. Like, I watched this, right? And then we think about, what did we see? Remember we saw, um, Lee, uh, uh, what's his name, Danzig's movie? Uh, oh god! The movie that, uh, I remember what the hell being was that? Sh- really bad. Uh, that Glenn Danzig did this movie. It was so bad I just forgot what it was called. Vampirotica or some shit like that. Oh, uh, uh, um, so, uh, Verotica, word, right? Verotica, yeah. And um, it like he had a budget. He had actors. It was ho- it was horrible. It was unbelievable yeah. how bad it if is. If this if this guy had a budget, I think that he could have made an amazing movie. I think so too because you know what it's. This, I would put this on par with, I'm not saying this is the greatest film, obviously, but I think what it is, we go in with low expectations, and yeah. when they actually do something that's sort of, that's fun, you know, yeah, because it's, it's just... It's fun. I mean, all the problems with it's it fun. are budget problems. That's it. It's, like, a, it's a fucking, it's a vampire movie. It's a vampire movie where they're chasing each other and shit. I had more fun watching this than I did John Carpenter's Vampires. And I know people are gonna be like, "What?" Like, I don't, going I don't crazy. agree with you, but I couldn't. I, <laughs> but I had fun with this because I knew I knew I had it was gonna be bad, but I wasn't offen- It wasn't like an offensively bad movie. I didn't think it was a bad movie at all. I thought it was actually fun because it looked like a couple of kids that had fun making a movie together. The acting is horrible. Like the the, the acting in John Carpenter's movies. Everything is that much is bad better. about it is a budget thing and also fun. E yeah. Fun. <laughs> and uh, and you, know, yeah, I bet you people are gonna <laughs> go watch the movie after listening to this and go, "What the fuck are you talking about?" But go in with low expectations. We apologize. Low, in yes, advance. go in with low expectations, and you will come back with an embarrassment of riches. Because the the main guy was it Toby. He's <laughs> he his like, voice, man. His voice you know what is it like, sounds like three octaves deeper than it should be. <laughs> I don't even. Th- I think what happens, he has like that vocal fry or that sort of um, Californian he accent. Talk like this is like his. He's body like, is like a little kid. He's like, hey man, they just kill all my friends, man. Like he talks like that. Like he came off of a fucking football. Also, they were something. playing music in here in this movie that uh, uh, it sounded like maybe you know they that's had that was. A, I think I think what happened is the vampire version that we saw. Um, they added a new soundtrack and they added sort of digital stuff to it. I don't know what uh, digital shit they added because it didn't look like there was digital stuff, but stuff like I don't know if you know you know when they had the title cards like thirty seven minutes till sunset, seven minutes yeah. till sunrise. Like like I thought that actually really worked. Like I liked that a lot, and I don't know if that yeah, was a post. Like at, at, if that at was a point, a I felt like you, you remember when. Um uh, in Dragon Ball Z, when Goku is fighting and the planet's about to explode, like uh, does it does it give warnings? No, no, no. But like it'll be like there's only an hour left until this whole planet uh, Namek explodes, and that's like twenty episodes. <laughs> well, so it takes a long time. <laughs> so like at one point it's like ten minutes to sunrise, and like <laughs> it's they're like being they're on chased that planet, by vampires. Though, right? It's like five scenes later. It's like what the fuck? How is this? Yeah, sun yeah. I definitely there yet? was definitely one part where it was like. Three minutes till sunrise, and they were running for at least twenty minutes. And, and then they, they right? were in the water, and they did this amazing uh, holy water that instantly infects the whole pond. I like, I love that because it was like very much. It was cool, um, yeah. 
Uh, they, and then the they because it was a metal band that did the soundtrack. So Arrow Video is the one that re-released it recently. Okay. Um, you can see on the website 13thdream.com, so 13thdream.com. So Arrow Video does that a lot. They reissue sort of these sort of obscure horror films. And uh, they did a, it's, they did a 2K re- restoration. So uh-huh. just looking, because the trailer for it, the new one, they, they show the movie. And it, it still looks sort of like I'd be shitty. curious to see this with like decent lighting and not pixelated. It still looks a little shitty, but I'm sure as in 4K it's much better. And I'm trying to find the name of the metal band that was part of it because you know usually you know what I'm I'm, I'm uh, I mean the metal many, band like, was like pretty legit it was good. sounding. Yeah, because you know what we uh, I think they were called Aposti or something like that, Ap- Apotasti or something like that. But okay. you know I have issues with metal music and horror films. I always think it's like yeah, but cheap. it sometimes works. It works. In, like these older ones, you know. Sometimes. And, but I thought it actually worked in here really well because it was like it added to that sort of um, punk element to it. Yeah. And just just like the, the the group of people that show up in this film that like left and right, like hundreds of characters appear on screen for some reason. Like, there's like two stories. There's like um, the main guy Toby. He um, we don't even know he's the main character in the first ten of se- ten minutes of the film or first yeah. three minutes. Yeah, it of took the film me a because, while to connect that he was the guy from the gas station actually. Because he's talking to the guy, he's like, "Hey, hey, you know, um, uh, you know, don't do it." And the guy kills himself, and then he starts running home, and he finds his mother and his sister are infected, and he leaves them out in the sun, and they explode. I was confused because the car that he had, he left it, and then he drives in with another car. So I was like, "What?" And then he goes and he finds a house where the vampires are. Because I think yeah. he got the hint that this guy, the guy who shot himself, he told him, "Oh, this area is where this vampire is going." There's no police, not a one cop to be seen in this area. Maybe uh, they're the seemed, the vampires. Maybe they turned into vampires. I did like that they gave an explanation, not an explanation, but they were like, "They're like, why the fuck is this vampire doing this all? Of- why is he making everybody go crazy?" Like. Why would you do that? Why would you cause this much mayhem? Because usually, like you know, in vampire movies, they try to keep it a little bit under. Well, the I don't covers. feel like they're intelligent. The vampires. Oh no, I don't think so at all. But they, I mean, they're talking about the main vampire guy. Like, why is he just creating all these vampires and just leaving it be? You know, like I don't they, think they're he. Sort of, I don't think he's like conscious. I think he's just like, you know, like I see them more as like zombies than vampires, even though they're vampires. Yeah, that's why I wonder if it was... The only thing that's vampire about them is that, like, they could talk a little bit and they can... If they get shot in the heart or whatever and sunlight. But other than that, like, they're basically... Yeah, so it makes me... It makes me wonder what the original version of this film was that they had to label it the vampire version. Like, maybe it was something else completely different, the original version, you know? I feel um, like I feel like that's just like a joke or something. They're calling it the vampire version. What the hell else would it? There's probably another movie called Darkness, and they were like, "We're Darkness, the vampire version," or something like joking. Like, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I, I I have no clue, but I I, I really appreciate it. I, I thought like the characters were okay. Like, um, you can't Man, really that acting though. <laughs> you can't really follow the characters as in like you. They like all look the anything? same to me, they and really the lighting do. does not help, and the pixelation and everything, like, it's really hard to tell who's who. Uh, the fun thing about it is that they just seem to be a couple of kids, like, the actors themselves just seem like actual, like, <laughs> the secondary story before all the characters meet up is a couple of kids going to a rock concert, and then they, I guess, you know, it just seems like it was a group of kids that were in a rock concert, and then the director say, hey, can I do a movie with you guys? Um, Some of the stuff that these characters do is so stupid. Like, <laughs> like at one point, this kid is running. I guess that's the rock concert. Where he's, like, in some kind of building, and there's, like, 20 of them surrounding him. And he pushes one lightly who goes flying into a wall, and his head's <laughs> bleeding. Oh, right. And he he, he just simply closes a door behind him, and they're, like, all just, like, incapable of opening the door. Like, they're just kind of lightly hitting it. Surprisingly, I actually enjoyed the use of darkness in the film. Like, the actual... Like, because the part when, you know, when, when the, that couple is walking in the street and they're like, Hey, what's that weird person doing down the street? And then, like, yeah. 20 people start chasing them. And right. you just see them walking, on, like, half silhouetted and half lit, running down the street. And I was like, that's fucking cool. Like, that was cool. The part where they're running through that... I, I don't know if it was a bus depot or something... And the camera mm-hmm. kept following them as they ran in the, and you could see the partitions. And they added some weird sort of fucking Star Trek sound effect for the sound of like, 
you know, the partition. It was like, vroom, vroom, and I'm like, they're not running as fast as cars. Like, you wouldn't hear that. That's like the, you know, like when you're driving in a car, a Doppler effect is when you yeah, hear, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, it sounded like that. Like, they were running that fast between those partitions. But, um, I, I like that they remember the guy with the girl and the, uh, this, is, this is all you can see is like the guy with the girl that's all they are is like you can't name guy girl number one number two yeah I don't know any of their fucking there was names. one or, original girl that's like with them and then she automatically gets killed just standing there like the vampires literally come out there's a huge body count in this I film I was confused fun. what happened at the end when the sunlight was getting them and then like the the Jody vampire the last vampire like yeah. I guess the friend that all had of a to be starts screaming like he that had to maybe? be, you know, when Jody, the last vampire guy, when he bit the other guy in his leg, that had to be that they didn't shoot him getting bitten on the leg because he wasn't oh. even close to him. And, yeah, I was like and, so confused. And you can see Jody on the floor and he looks at the I'm camera. I'm pretty sure that the bite was a steak. I th- it looked like a steak was in uh-huh. his leg. <laughs> but I know is that because they see Jody on the floor and the two people are like uh, crying about him, and you see Jody look off camera like <laughs> like he was ready to get like I think that was like a B roll that oh, he was, okay. and then they just kept it in there so this guy could get bit even though he was nowhere near him. Um, <laughs> it was a fan- fantastic mass vampire explosion at the end. Is that the I water lo- one or oh you're talking about it on the street? Yeah, yeah, in the street when they they get caught by the sunrise. And it's just like three minutes. It's like almost art house. But it just, just, the way it's shot, though, the sun had was due to come up for like an hour at this point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, and I think it's like when the actual daylight. sun is. Yeah, I know, because it looks like daylight. I mean, there's no question that it's fucking sun is out. But I guess what, I guess when they see the sun or something. But they're like totally, which uh, they totally obliterated. There's like a a, a puppet a, a puppet skeleton that's exploding in blood. It's phenomenal, and the soundtrack yeah. to it is incredible. It's just like it's fun and that's the one thing that like for a horror film as long as it's fun even if it's like fucking stupid like yeah. I enjoyed the shit out of it like even if you look look up the Arrow video uh, you know what Rue Morgue is Rue Morgue I think was a, is a horror magazine like Fangoria um, and okay. they have a they have a poster of it and that poster is fucking dope. It's like a dope ass poster. Are you, are you that doing they, that one that's got the red? It's yeah, right. Red. It's like an orange poster, and it's like it. You see the main guy in the top, and like it just looks fucking cool. And I'm like, damn, yo, that's like. Can you imagine any you making just some sort of cheap movie when you were a kid, but you cared about it? Although five thousand yeah. dollars is not a cheap movie. That's not a cheap movie. <laughs> There's a lot of people who can't get make five thousand dollars in a fucking year, and the poster. Yeah, but looks if they got cool. like. If he got like fifty people in the movie, it all chip in like. Oh, absolutely, bucks. yeah, it's fine. Like, and uh, you know, it was so funny how that one secondary lead guy, how he, he he shoots the main vampire guy three times and gets rid of him real quick. And I was like, is that all they needed to do? Like, is that how they got rid of the vampire? Guy? I almost thought that was great. Like, I thought that's how they killed him. Like, I was like, oh, that's fucking great. Like, they just killed the bad guy like off like just like nothing. And I thought that was so fucking cool. But and obviously it comes out at the at the end out of the dirt again and it, and it all starts over again. I almost wish. Yeah, but they, I mean, how many people could live in the middle of nowhere where these people live? You can tell this was a mostly white neighborhood because there's only one black person in the film and they're a vampire. Yeah, by the end of the I film. saw that. And they it was were the running. big it was the big African American person, <laughs> and I was like, wow, that that was the only uh, African American in town. Like that's the only person they're like, hey, you want to be a vampire? So they literally killed the black character even off screen before the movie started. Um, but at least they were represented. <laughs> yeah, but they right? were still alive in a sense. So That's okay. true. So there you go. Um, but I like the voice of the vampires. Yeah, yeah, like they digitized. I think I'm sure that was a post thing too, because I'm sure there wasn't like I'm sure that wasn't. Yeah, an how would they have done that? Yeah, um, but like I, I really like I don't know what else I can really say about this film other than it's like super fun and it's like it's constant. Like there's no. There's no, like, breathing room, as in, like, it doesn't slow down at all. Like, maybe for one or two scenes when they're in the house, waiting around and stuff like that. And I like how stupid the characters are when, like, when they see Jody, I'm the guy's brother. I'm trying to see, like, have any of these actors been in anything else, but not really. Yeah, they, they work at, like, car dealerships, or they work at the mall, they do something. They plaster homes and shit, which is fine. Um, but I, Because uh, I remember there was one scene where I didn't know that the Jody was the brother with the other kid in the van at the beginning of the film. Because you can't mm-hmm. make out what the fuck they're saying in the movie. 
Um, cause I was wondering why does he slowly walk up to this guy who clearly is covered in blood like a fucking vampire? But then I was like, oh, that's his brother. That's why. I assume you would look at your brother differently if you you're like, hey, you all right? You know. But yeah, yeah these people are well, really. The people in this movie don't have much get... common sense. There's really a don't. movie called Vampire Boot Camp: Reflections on a Decade of Darkness. Yeah, I think he worked on that also. So that that was probably like a little doc about it, because yeah. I think that's how. I hope he's gotten his money back for this. I'm sure he's got his money, money and more so because he kept playing it through film festivals. He would just throw the darkness on, which is good. Yeah. You know, it's it's fun. It's a fun fucking movie, and I almost wish there's a Kickstarter for Leaf to to remake make a second it or something, one. but with like a budget. No, I want to see a great. second one. I want to see him deal with that fucking vampire getting out at the end of the movie. I want but the vampire would be person. like all old and shit now. <laughs> they they can hire a new actor. I'm sure vampires can't age. <laughs> Just he can use half of the budget on those good de aging effects that they use in every movie now, and the oh, guy right. be like the guy have a giant pot belly, but he'll have the same. I face. just finally watched um, Captain Marvel finally, and they made Samuel L. Jackson like yeah, that 30. was good. That was good. Yeah. Like that's but the thing is, it, I don't think it takes much to de age Samuel Jackson since he's because he's the in same. every fucking movie. They got a million screenshots. Of right, him. but also since he's not he. He looks the same. Like if you look at him in uh, one of those prequel movies, the Star Wars ones, he looks just yeah. like how he looks now. All they got to do is get rid of a few creases. He doesn't look as old as he would because you know. Right. He just. You saw. Um, did you, well, you know what? I don't want to spoil. What Captain America? I yeah, spoil. I saw that movie. <laughs> I saw that film. Um, no, no, I was going to say something or? else. I'm glad you don't know what it is. So never mind. Okay. Anyway, so Darkness, uh, I, I don't know what else we can talk about, but other than that, I, I, it's a total fucking fun experience. Uh, it's, it's Yeah, I would say it's worth watching. Absolutely. Uh, watching it with a, a casual your... sort of fun way. Right. Yeah, if you watch it with a gr- group of your friends. This is not friends. like going to change your life. <laughs> no, it's not going to change your life, but it's it's definitely um, worth watching. Because I saw it basically in one go, and usually I don't do that with movies. Um, and yeah. I had a fun, I had a fun time with it. It was d- big, dumb fun, and it's like watching a couple of people have fun making a movie. Like you knew they had fun making the movie, and I think that yeah. actually comes out on screen for some reason. It um, is kind of like an Evil Dead sort of thing. I yeah, would say. right. Yeah, it's a, it's a group of although friends. Evil like, Dead evil... is technically Sam. Better. Yeah, Sam Raimi obviously is leagues of fucking talent with him. Like he, he wasn't seventeen when he did Evil Dead. You know what I mean? He was a little bit yeah. older. Um, but I, I think that this is worth watching just because it's a, there's a fun element to it. So I would give it um, a six and a half out of ten, running as fast as a Doppler effect at a depot. Okay, I'm gonna what, give Danny. It a, what rating would you give Darkness? Nineteen. I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten, uh, using holy water on somebody, and it melts their whole arm. And then instead of chopping their head off or whatever as they struggle to grab a gun you just play with a chainsaw in their hand yeah that was funny i i like that part i thought it was like very comedic because i thought you know the last time when he screams after that last guy dies and he's like yeah. and then, it and then cuts it's like to, two days later and it's like and then he's still ah. screaming i laughed yeah. so because i thought is this like a joke like he's still been screaming for like 24 hours but then obviously yeah. he wakes up and is and I got scared because I thought, don't tell me this is a whole fucking was a dream. But then they, I think it was just him remembering. It right, right, right. But they corrected it because the girl was in the car with him. But I got, I was like, uh oh, I was like, don't tell me that's the fucking ending because I'd be pissed if it was nothing had happened. And it was just like a delirious sort of nightmare. But it all yeah. happens and it was fun. So with that, uh, Danny, what's the final word? Gray underpants. Yeah.